welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to do a mini craft party. This is going to be a blast. This is perfect for like a small group of people or a large group of people. Doesn't matter. My project is Valentine's theme, but you can do anything you like. In fact, you don't even need a theme for this one. First thing that I'm going to do is cover my table with a disposable tablecloth. These run a dollar and will save a ridiculous amount of time. You can find these at the Dollar Tree. They're generally very expensive and they're going to save a ridiculous amount of time and energy cleaning up, especially because we're going to be using some paint for this project. Once you have your tablecloth on, it's time to set the table. So at each individual place, we're going to put things that people don't share. So for this project, they're going to need a mason jar, a little plate so that they can paint on, of course a paintbrush. This is the Kleenex container that I really like to use because everything fits nicely into these things. They'll need a special piece of felt. The felt that we're going to use for this project is fairly stiff. It holds its shape really well, so it's not like normal felt. They only need a little square, so I'm just going to give them that. And we're going to have a coffee party this time, so I added this fun little mug. In the center of the table, we're going to use shared supplies. So things like paint. This can go onto many, many different people's plates, and it's fine. You're only going to need your scissors for a short period of time, so they can totally share that. Here's some fun beads and some string and raffia that they can put around and decorate their finished project. So now, my friends, it's time to get crafting. The first thing you're going to have your guests do is choose their paint. When you're looking for paint to use for this project, you're going to look for the Co er, Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. This works really well. They have it in all different Valentine's colors. And you're going to need about two coats of paint for every one of your jars. One of the things that you can do to make sure that this paint is going to work is you look at the top and if there's a little wine glass, that's an easy tell that this is going to work for ceramic or glass. The first thing you're going to have your guests do is just take the paint, open it up, and put about a tablespoon into the plate. I'm using green today because I think that's fun. Then you're going to open the lid on your jar and all you're going to do is just paint away. This is one of those crazy satisfying experiences and you're gonna let your guests paint the entire thing. If they wanted to do more than one color, they absolutely could. Maybe I'll try that. But we're just gonna paint all the way around the bottle. Don't worry about painting the bottom or the top. The bottom's gonna be on the floor. Nobody's gonna see it. And I like to try to get up toward the rim, but not too close. Once you have a nice first coat, just sit it aside to dry for a little while, and then you'll be able to put a second coat on if you want it to be fully covered. If you like the look of this brush mark, leave it just as it is. Once you have two coats of paint on your jar and it's nice and dry, this should take about maybe half an hour or so, you're going to take a little emery board. And you can take sandpaper, but um, this one is guacamole and I think it's adorable. Also, emery boards just tend to be less expensive and people happen to have them around. And what you're going to do is you're just going to lightly sand at the top of your jar. That way the little ball container or the little like writing is gonna come out and it's gonna look distressed. If you don't like this, you don't have to do it. See, now you can see the writing and this is always like my favorite part. So I love this little area over here. And if you get a little bit of extra that comes off the jar, no worries. We call this the distressed farm look, even though I don't live on a farm much to my dismay. Now that you've distressed your jar, you're going to have a really important choice to make. Are you going to invite your guests to paint on the jar, or are you going to leave it bare and decorate it in another way? If you're going to paint directly on the jar, there are lots of different ways you can do this. You can take your same plate of paint and add a whole bunch of like fun things with a smaller paintbrush, or you can do this trick. You can take some puff paint and have people just straight up draw all over the jar. One of my favorite things to do is to show people how to make cute little easy hearts. And the way that you do that with puff paint is here, let me show you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make two little balls of paint, one and two, and then you're gonna take the tip and make a V. And that is gonna make a super easy heart. So I'm gonna paint this little guy with all these little red hearts. This will be a step that you wanna do only if you have at least an hour to let that puff paint dry. I also will often put it in front of a heater or a fan just to help it dry a little bit faster. But invite your guests to go crazy and don't stick with just red puff paint. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with this. So now as you're waiting for this to dry, 
what you're gonna wanna invite people to do is take the lids that came with these jars, use this as a pattern. So cut around the lid of the jar. Notice my circle is not perfect. It does not have to be perfect. What you're gonna do next is fold your circle in half, cut about a half an inch down the center, and then cut it in or fold it in the other half, cut half an inch center down that way. And now we have a cute little opening for our tissue. Now that you've got an opening for your tissue, slip that underneath the ring and it's gonna fit on your jar. Once this bit is all done, we're gonna take our Kleenex box, we're gonna pull the top out, and we're just gonna take the entire wad of Kleenex and stick it right on into this jar. And then we're gonna pull from the center to get that first tissue out, which is always hard, but you can do it. I can do it. That tissue, or if you've done more than one tissue. Okay, there we go. That tissue then gets threaded through your X. And the lid of your jar goes straight on. There we go. So now it's sort of done, but we're gonna want some more fancy things. What I'm gonna do here for this particular project is I have taken the technique that I just showed you and made some beads that have little hearts on them. So for this particular one, I'm gonna take some macrame cord, wrap it around my jar a few times, cut lots of sides on the both sides, and then I'm just gonna add some fun little wooden beads to this guy. Pin through the cord and then check it out. You can do the same thing. So what you're gonna do is put the bobby pin through the cord and then thread it through and it's super easy to get right on there. So this one I'm gonna have, the center bead is large so I don't really need to do that trick. You can also take a pair of scissor heads, shove that stuff right on through there. And then I'm just gonna put a little knot on the bottom. So this guy stays just like that. And really, how cute is this one? Not cute enough, you say? Yeah, I get that a lot. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of crushed ribbon so that you can't see as much of the top right around here. Ooh, that's cute. And because I'm a lazy bum, rather than doing anything fancy, I'm gonna wrap it around, take more of my macrame cord, and just tie it in place. I am not a hot glue kind of person. Oh, this one's adorable. I can't wait to show you the other ones that I'm working on. There are so many fun ways to finish these little guys off. One way that I think is super fun is to take these little ah, wool hearts that we'll be making next week, also another super fun craft party, and add them to this guy right there. You can also use a whole bunch of macrame beads and just kind of go to town. This is also a really fun way to do it. You can even paint these little beads just like we painted this fun jar. Or if you wanna go simple, just take a little macrame cord and wrap it around, maybe a little heart on the edge. This is a great way to get crafting with friends. This is a fun way to start teaching craft parties. Make sure you get lots of pictures at the end of people like holding up their creations. That way, if you decide to turn it into a business, you've already got content. If you need more help teaching craft parties, check out our website, moonlightmakes.com. We've got all sorts of resources for you, both free and as well as a membership, where we've got all of these crafts that are all ready, photographed for you and uh, ready to go. Happy crafting, enjoy craft parties, and good luck.